Hi guys, Andy here again and in this lesson I'm talking you guys through how to organise the songs that you know into some kind of practice routine and talking you guys through how I design practice routines for my private students and Skype students and how I can help you guys out with learning uh, again through the beginners course that's online or help you organize a practice routine at absolutely any level that you're at. So um, there's kind of, when it comes to practicing sometimes people can feel a little bit lost. Now there are two common scenarios that I see day in day out with my private students and online students um, as to why people feel lost. Um, so if you're right at the beginning of my beginners course or you're just starting out on your guitar journey you can kind of be thinking how many songs do I need to learn before I can move forward and do I need to master everything that I take on before moving forward be it kind of all the chords that you should know or be it just one song that you're trying to learn should I master that one song all the way through along to the record which is what I recommend all the time should I do that for every song that I learn going forward? Or if you already know a whole bunch of songs um, and maybe you're at quite a high level on guitar but you just know all of these things, how can you possibly maintain say 20 or 30 songs? Do you need to keep all those songs and, and play them forever? Um, and how can you possibly kind of go about that? Um, and then that kind of all boils down to the one question which is should you master one thing before moving on or can you kind of take on numerous things but when you do how do you know which ones to focus on. Um, to help you guys out with that what I've uh, done is um, I'm going to show you guys a recommended practice routine for one of my students called Chris who's been taking Skype lessons for about six months now. He's uh, kind of to the towards the end of the beginner's course really but there's still a couple of things that we're working on such as riffs which he finds more difficult in particular and I'm going to show you how I've structured his practice routine and then give you a practice routine blueprint which is kind of appropriate for anyone at any level and I'm going to talk about how I've kind of broken it, broken it down. So um, the big thing I definitely want to get across to you guys is you should not take on any more than 10 songs that you're going to continue to maintain and um, keep you know keep playing day after day time after time practice time after practice time if you have more than 10 songs it's it's going to be impossible to to maintain or get through them all basically so you need to pick and choose but those 10 songs should showcase the range of your guitar playing so that means that some of those songs say two, three or four, might be quite easy for you. And they might be, say, if you're at level five of my beginner's course, some of those songs might still be from level two. But you have to be quite savvy as to which ones you keep and which ones you're going to let go, which ones have kind of served their purpose. So there are certain songs from my beginner's course or any songs that you will have learnt or riffs that you've learnt which work on multiple things just in one say riff or one one uh, chord sequence so songs such as from say level two of my beginners course chasing cars and i can't explain have all three chords at that um that level e a and d but also work on um speed of chord changes with a higher level strumming pattern or a higher level riff and they're still going to be good ones to keep even if you're working on say your E minor pentatonic scale right towards the end of the beginners course okay um, so you still want to keep certain ones especially if you can play them along to the record and it's sounding good and you can get along to the end of the record and you enjoy them you need to keep exercising that skill of playing things correctly otherwise if everything that you take on say you choose 10 songs but they're all the absolute hardest 10 songs and they're all right at the edge of what you're physically kind of capable of at the moment, then you're practicing kind of everything being done a little bit slowly and, and you're practicing things that aren't quite, uh, quite developed yet, techniques that aren't quite developed yet. So you need to keep certain things which you're doing absolutely spot on to, to make that transferred over to the new stuff.
and this skill of playing along to the record as well is so important. Um, and as I say, with the range of your guitar playing, there wants to be some songs there in the songbook style, which is following a chord sheet and maybe without bar lines at all, and you just have chords sporadically spaced out and you change chord on a certain word. And there wants to be some short, recognisable riffs in there. Now, depending on whether you're taking on acoustic or electric guitar, kind of one of those styles tends to suit one or the other. You know, electric guitar, we've got more riffs to pick from, for example. But you still want to showcase that range just so that you're not only improving, say, just your riffs or just your, your songbook songs. We, we need both to go up together to get full benefit of this course. Um, so let me show you, I've got Chris's permission to uh, show you this, this practice routine um, that, we, that we picked out for him last time. So you can see that we've got 10 songs written, but I've split them up into three categories. Songs that are performance standard, which um, Chris is very confident with, and these were the ones that he can play most of the way through and take on towards the record. Maybe they just need a little bit of, of polish with them, you know, a couple of the changes aren't as solid as they could be, but he can do a good job of them. And then the other songs from his repertoire we split into just show, trying to showcase this range. So single note playing is something that he particularly struggles with. So I've made sure that I've included the E minor pentatonic scale, which you should cycle four times to make sure that you can play properly. Um, Seven Nation Army and Misty Mountain Hop. Just a couple of single note electric guitar riffs that are short, repetitive, recognisable and with a little bit of practice he will be able to get them along to the song. It's just a case of um, learning the structure of the song and making sure that he can hear the riff in the song so that he can play along to it. And then the songbook songs at the end are um, three songs which are quite at the highest level compared to some of the other songs. They, these are so a level seven, level level eight songs, most of them really. And we've included them there to round his repertoire up to ten songs. The one that I added to his practice routine was Can't Explain by The Who, which he hadn't learnt from just taking the online course, just from you know picking which, whichever songs he wanted from the list of songs that are on my website. And I added that one because it was the riffs that he struggled with. So I chose a much easier riff to take on, but that worked on all those same skills. Again, you've got palm muting in this song, a bit of silence in there, faster chord changes, faster strumming, and a short recognisable riff that you should be able to play along to the record. All those different things in one song, um, rather than making sure that he keeps going with a song such as Knocking on Heaven's Door, which is just three chords repeated over and over again, and quite slow, the strumming's okay but it's not as high level as, as it could be. It's not as challenging for the same short amount of time, you'll get more benefit from that one in my opinion. Okay.